So we are a workspace. We're sitting right now in the RBG meeting room. So we have meeting rooms because there's a lot of people off site that need to come and have a place for a meeting. And then we have the event. So that separates us from a lot of other spaces. But really what makes us the most unique is we're more like a school and like everyone knows everyone. We're kind of like the principals. We know every student that comes in the door. We know what's going on. How's your mom? Did your son get over strep throat? How was the proposal? You know, all these things. So we're much more than just like, we're gonna come to work and get our work done and then go home. We are not that. Hi, Money Movers. Welcome to another episode of Her Money Moves. And I am exhilarated <laughs> to be interviewing a dear, inspirational woman who has really tapped into her dreams and created a very special space for all women. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Suru. Hi, Stacy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally pinching myself because yeah. I remember coming here almost two years mm -hmm. ago when I was first starting my entrepreneurial journey mm -hmm. and sitting with you and you looked at me and said, I can't wait to see where you are in three years. And it's two years and look where you are. You're ahead of schedule. <laughs> Who knew that we would be yeah. here on the Her Money Moves podcast? Mm -hmm. And it really gives me chills. I will never forget that mm -hmm. because I feel like you saw something. And I know that every single woman who comes to She Space, that's what they get from you. Oh, thank like you. Like the madrina. So. so can you share with our audience your journey to She Space? It's a long journey. So I have um, a lot of pearls of wisdom around my neck. I felt we were starting to get some traction, starting to make some headway, but I felt women were still working very independently of one another. And I felt in order to really get momentum, all these groups of women, all these organizations, groups within groups needed to come together. And I thought they needed a physical place to do that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I had a, an amazing experience on a trip to Israel, which right now is very timely because what I experienced could not happen today in the world. I met two women, one was Israeli and one was Palestinian. And they had met through an exchange program and had become very good friends and had started a company together. And it just could not happen today. And their company was a tour company. And they would take groups of women visiting Israel um, into one of the Palestinian districts. And it was a group of women and they took us into a women's center. And so I saw these amazing, amazing women coming together and setting aside all the differences so that it's always existed. It's always going to exist, but they were setting it aside and coming together just as women, like just like what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing experience. It completely was that light bulb moment that everyone talks about, but I really, really had that moment. And when I left 45 minutes later, I was said, I am going to do something like that in Houston, Texas. I'm going to find a place and bring women together. At the same time, I didn't have a lot of business experience, but my daughter-in-law um, has a finance background and has worked in corporate America. At the same time, she was experiencing some discontent in a big corporate setting in a male-dominated industry, which I know you understand, and I'm sure we'll probably get into that. And so we came together in a partnership, and the two of us started She Space. So she had an amazing perspective, which is different. So we had a couple of different generations, different perspectives, which really is now I know like a called a master partnership. Wow. Didn't know that at the time, but I know that now. One thing that's so special about mm -hmm. this space, I mean, not only how you've brought together so many different women from different backgrounds, different industries, but also like the programming that mm -hmm. you have here mm -hmm. is exceptional. Mm -hmm. You know, like here and we'll celebrate RBG's yes. birthday. Yes. And like today we're kicking off the new year with a vision board party. Yes. You know, Which you are leading, by the way. Yeah. Super <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> yes. So that I do think is another thing that separates us. So we are a workspace because 
that is part of the services we need to provide to women. It's not all we do, but it's a lot of what we do. So we are a workspace. We're sitting right now in the RBG meeting room. So we have meeting rooms because there's a lot of people off site that need to come and have a place for a meeting. And then we have the event. So that separates us from a lot of other spaces. But really what makes us the most unique is we're more like a school and like everyone knows everyone. We're kind of like the principals. We know every student that comes in the door. We know what's going on. How's your mom? Did your son get over strep throat? How was the proposal? You know, all these things. So we're much more than just like, we're going to come to work and get our work done and then go home. We are not that. It's like family. It is so much like family. And like you said, we have so many industries in there. We have a almost 300 members. And my guess is we probably have 275 different industries in here because everyone does something different. So it makes it so easy when we need something. <laughs> so like we can go to Sarah at Speaker Box Media, or we can come to you, whatever we need. There are some, there is a woman in our network that can help us. And if they, if we don't know, then they will know somebody who knows. Incredible. It's actually quite lovely way to live. Well, I think it's also so intriguing how you were very intentional mm. when you constructed and when you planned this entire space. Mm -hmm. um, can you share with us how that? So the intentionality started before they even built the building. So it's about where is the building going to be located? So another way we're different, we are not in an office setting. We are in a retail setting because my pain point is wasted time because we're all so busy. And I hate to say it, but my blood pressure goes up when I sit at a red light. It's not pretty. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, okay, if I'm going to go to the grocery store and then I need to go to the hardware store and then I need to get gas and go to the ATM. And the nail salon. And the nail salon. And if that includes like seven stoplights, just think how much time that has taken out of my day. So all of those things are in the parking lot. All of those things in the parking lot. I don't even need to get into the car to get all my errands run. So that's brought my blood pressure down. It's put time into my day, which has put time into my week to do things I want to do, which is usually help well, listen to women more or spend more time with my family or heaven forbid, go for a walk. Like all these things. So it is really improving lifestyle. Mm. So it started before the building was even built by locating the building and had to be on a bus route and it had to be right next to the interstate. Then we started building the inside, which was also not as difficult as you would think because it was a team of all women. Yes. And everyone was on the same page, starting from the architect to the construction manager, to the exterior signage, to the IT, to every single person was either a woman-owned company or we worked with the woman as the rep in the company. As often as possible, woman-owned company. That's incredible. And where everyone was on board and wanted to do this project. And so intentional, but they were all doing their best work. We were never getting pushed to the back of the line we were all coming together to do this amazing project that hadn't been done. So intentional, very, very intentional, like nothing's accidental. The colors especially are really I important. I love the colors. But they're, again, they're, 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 on, they're on purpose <laughs> because each color means something. No, yeah, but when you walk in here, there it's is a, a feeling. It, yes. It's a feeling. Yes. It's a different kind of energy. And it's from and the colors. Vibrant. And the people. And yes, yeah. it's beautiful. Thank and you. it's like, it makes you want to keep coming back. Every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you have to work long hours, it doesn't, everybody's still happy. Everybody has like a bit of a down day from time to time, but it just doesn't last long here. Not just because of the space, but because there's so many women around you to lift you up who've probably been through the same thing. Like can literally understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. They may have just been through it a day or two ago or a year ago. So there's always someone to, yeah, I get you. Without you even mm -hmm. having to say a word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Stephanie, um, can you share what your leadership style is like um, as you lead this very vibrant community at She Space? The first 90 minutes to a, to two hours of the day, we are really not going to be working on our projects or getting our things done. We are going to be walking around, talking to women, listening to what's going on. And that is how we have been able to 
put systems in place and adjust systems. So just because you have created a system doesn't mean it's there forever. You have to listen. You have to be willing to tinker with it and keep working on it till it works for most of the people or for your team. And I don't even think of myself really as a manager, but there is a thing like manage by walk around. So it's basically just being visible and going from person to person. And literally when somebody has on bright green, it's like, oh my gosh, you have on my favorite color again. Yeah. I mean, so like, it's really like just a bunch of women who know each other, who are friends. You know, women have like a stereotype of being difficult to manage and we 100% disagree. Yeah, you're proving them all wrong. That's a lot of what we do, though. <laughs> that is also something we intentionally set out to like break the myths of and stereotypes of women. Like women can't negotiate, women can't bargain. All this nonsense, which we do all day long. I encourage people to do that. I just had this conversation yesterday. Someone, it was time for. Uh, oh, she's doing summer camps. She's having holding summer camps at She Space this summer. And she asked me, I'm doing this many camps. Can maybe I get a break in the price? And I said, well, we'll talk about it. But if I say yes, it's not because of the camps. It's because you asked. Hmm. So we sat down and we have a conversation. Good for her. She goes, but it's scary to ask these questions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We have to learn how to always don't be afraid and, and to it ask. Can- this comes down to the money talk, though. Mm-hmm. The, the things that women are oftentimes afraid of are deal with their finances. Just because something goes for this price, you you know, let's let's talk about. It. I personally think it's fun. Somebody can say no to me, but so again, when it comes to the leadership, it's I think it's leading by example. Mm-hmm. Every time someone asks me that question, I think I give a different answer. But, <laughs> How do you celebrate some of the wins of mm. some of your members here? We've had amazing things happen here. Um, we've had someone pass the bar. We have had, oh my gosh, baby. So we are, we are having baby showers. We have quarterly baby showers for our members. Um, we had a woman just finish the marathon on Sunday. So like all these things we celebrate as a community. Oh, we had a birthday today. So celebrate birthdays. We have monthly birthday brunches. We all take care of each other in here. Like people walk down the hall, they said, have you eaten today? (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Well, another thing that I I notice, and I think it's so beautiful is often you come in here and you've got your dog or your grand dogs and your beautiful granddaughters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very family friendly and welcoming. It is family friendly because as women, we have to adjust to whatever the day brings. So it really is, I mean, we'll have strollers in here. We have a lactation room for moms. Very first thing that Katie put on the list, she's like, we have to have the lactation room. So this place is built for women and all the things that come with it. So you've talked about the how you've helped your community at She Space grow um, their personal lives. How about how you're helping their their businesses thrive and grow? So yes, there are two sides to every woman, the professional side and the personal side. And we do work on growth in both. And so we have talked a lot about attending to women's um, personalities, but we inside She Space all have strengths and weaknesses. Everyone does. And so what my, I know what your strengths are, which are probably different than mine, but when we put them together, then we're both going to grow professionally. So we take members inside She Space, knowing what their strengths are, we use them to train the women that that may not be their strength. So it's twofold. They are teaching the women and we are giving them exposure for their business. So let's say in next week or week after next, we are having social media come in. So that is, she is a social media expert. That's what she does. Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. So she will teach a workshop on social media. So we have given her business exposure. In the meantime, we have the whole room of women listening and asking questions because that 
may not be their strong suit. Mm -hmm. And it's something that everyone needs to know more about. But most people have definite areas that they know they need to improve on. So we have several attorneys in here. So we will have someone give a, a, a B law talk, or we will have someone do trademark. We have, it doesn't really matter. We have we have specialists in here that are involved in part of the community. And so we tap into those women to work on everyone else's professional development and to grow their areas to fill the voids. Like my area that needed really needed work on was based was finance. Like I get the grand picture. I can look at the numbers, but I need it like I need help like profitability coach. We have a profitability coach in here. Oh, awesome. So that's her job. That's what she does. And that is her business, but she also speaks here regularly. So again, you have to be part of the community in order to speak here. Because we really want to give, like I said, if you believe in us, we're going to believe in you. You support us. Mm -hmm. We support you. And I appreciate you uh, allowing me to have the opportunity yes, here. But you've of, been a steadfast supporter for a long time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And always will be. I mm -hmm. think it's beautiful what you have nurtured and grown here. It's very special. Mm -hmm. So I know firsthand, um, coming from corporate and now being an entrepreneur, that there are many, many challenges. And mm -hmm. um, can you share what kind of that growth paradox has been for you on this journey? So the growth paradox is means like growth is a slippery, slippery slope. So for many people, they do believe that growth is the key to success. That is sometimes a case. I think you need to define growth, like growth in what way? So is success for us having 18 she spaces? Maybe, or maybe it's just having one very successful she space. So that is the challenge is identifying what is success to your individual business. The, one of the biggest pitfalls that we see, and we're oftentimes trying to slow women down instead of speed them up, is that they grow too fast before they have their systems in place. Because it's your systems that allows you to duplicate. So your systems have to be really sound and in place before you, you know, before you move on. So that being said, we have worked for three years to get our systems in place. We could we have expanded in a year, probably. Would it have been successful? I have I I have no idea. It was not the right thing to do. So we feel comfortable that now is the right time. First of all, we are completely full, um, which is exciting. We yes. have twenty five offices. We're completely full. Congratulations. So thank you. Um, and now women do a lot of the PR for us, just, you know, in, in, in the network, but, um, so now is the right time for us. So for us, growth is to slowly look for the next spot, find the perfect spot. So our goal is to find out what the woman's idea of success is and then help her get that. It's different for every person. So growth is different for a solopreneur versus a team. Not everyone wants to grow to a team. So like some people want to function as a solopreneur. We have about 50% entrepreneurs inside She Space, and they all work together and they all know who each other are and, and they help each other grow. So we have several CPAs in here. If we see someone faltering, we will literally go to them and say, what's going on here? What can we do? What do you need? It is analyzing their business from an objective point of view. Yeah. I mean, very, very surface, but objective point of view and saying, this is what I think. And everyone does that, not just me. Um, I just have a broader base of knowledge because I just have more years. Doesn't mean that you couldn't do the same thing. So you've got entrepreneurs, you've mm -hmm. got, how about remote workers? We're about 50% entrepreneurs um, and about 50% remote workers. The workforce has definitely changed since COVID and it will never go all the way back to the way it was. I still think the the working world is trying to figure that out. But 
I do think some people have gone back to the office a couple of days a week, two, maybe three, but most teams that I know of are not required to be in the office all the time. Mm -hmm. So what do they do with those days when they're not at the office? They either can't work from home or they don't want to work from home. Like th this week when it was like 20 degrees, when it felt like 20 degrees below zero, yeah. you would think no one would come in here, but they did not want to be home alone in the cold. It's very interesting the days that this place is busy. It's like on rainy days, you'd think they'd be at home. They want to come in and be around people. It's really interesting. So those are the remote workers. And so if they're working all alone all the time, it's very hard for them to stay motivated, to stay inspired. They'll come in here and they go, oh my gosh, I got 10 hours of stuff done that would have taken me a week at home because I'm stopping, I'm doing the laundry and I'm watering the plants, mm -hmm. all those things, <laughs> painting my fingernails. So um, those people, I don't have a percentage. A large percentage of those people have an idea that they are working on on the side. And then they will go to the women that have taken the leap into entrepreneurship. Yeah. And so many of them have left their job and started their own thing. And be well, who wouldn't want to come in here and spend some time with you <laughs> and learn from you and Katie, yeah. you know, firsthand of, you know, what it's like to go after your dream and you walk in here every day and like you manifested this. Yeah, it's pretty special. Stephanie, your energy, it's infectious and clearly you just radiate all this amazing energy and looks, you know, seems like you're really happy and living in your purpose. It's true. It's true. We love what we do. We never get tired of coming here. We work hard. We look, work long hours. But every day is, I have to say, it's really fun. And we get energy from the women in here. So it's easy to be vibrant and energetic because we are all very happy to be here. Very happy to be here. We're happy to see women succeeding in doing what they love. We were happy to lift them up and they need lifted up. We love celebrating. We love popping champagne. And we are aware how fortunate we are to have found what we love and get to do it every day. That is very unusual. And we live in it. Like we, we, it surrounds us and we just look around and we're like, at the end of the day, it's an amazing feeling because it's a it's a tangible, you know, like we can reach out and touch it. It's a physical space and it's something that we never get tired of sharing and meeting the women in here. It's it's really something that I never thought we would get to do. And five years ago it wasn't even an idea, and now we've been open for over three. It's amazing. So for the woman who is you know, sitting on the edge, trying to figure out what to do next, what advice would you give her? That is my specialty. It, we had this talk two years ago, yes, basically. You had already decided what you wanted to do. Many women have an idea, but they teeter-totter. They kind of stand on the edge of the, the end of the diving board, uh, the edge of the cliff. And I am very good at getting them to jump off. There are a number of women in here that said, I have this idea. Um, I don't know. And I'm like, tell me about it. And I'm like, oh yes, you can do this. We are going to do this. One of those women that had this conversation with me maybe a year and a half ago is at her first trade show in Atlanta this week. Amazing. And it's just because I am, I get, I get so excited. I get so <laughs> excited and it's so genuine. And I think that was just a gift I was given, a gift of encouragement. Mm. I think it's because I was always encouraged by my grandmother and my mother. And I think that just comes second nature to me. But now I'm using it for a whole generation of women. You are truly impacting so many lives. So I love to ask my guests this. Oh. You've, you've already created and cultivated so much, but what are you dreaming bigger about next? So there are more She Spaces coming. 
Um, and it is taking us a while, not because we're not ready to do it, but because we're so selective about finding the right spot. So more she space is coming, which means we will, you know, double, triple, quadruple the impact. But for every woman we touch, then they touch so many women and their children. So it is like it's that ripple effect or the butterfly effect. And so I do look forward to that. I am very aware that my own daughters and granddaughters are watching what I do. And so I do think of, of it as a uh, multi-generational impact. And so what I look forward to is 20 years from now, just sitting back and watching the whole thing. <laughs> well, thank you so much oh, for being you. with us today and making time. Her money movers. You've got to come check out She Space in Houston, Texas. It is such a jewel and a very special place. It's hard to even describe um, unless you're here and experience it yourself.